<laughs> yeah. Greetings Wanderer, this is Atlas here and welcome to The Void. Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down a song called Time's Scar from the Chrono Cross original soundtrack. This is the winner of one of the latest polls that I did in my Patreon and as you can see here, uh, it went against Genshin Impact, a, co uh, a, a song called Inazuma, and he won by a fair large amount of margin, I would say, right? So I'm really looking forward to do this uh, breakdown because I did play, I think the first JRPG that I played ever in my life was Chrono Trigger. And I do know that this is either a sequel or is, you know, within the Chrono Trigger universe or whatnot. I did not play Chrono Cross, but I am familiar to a certain degree at least with the with the universe of, of the Chrono Trigger universe. <laughs> but before we begin, I would like to invite you to listen to my latest track, which is a Berserk inspired track called Conceived in Blood, which is the song that you have been listening in the background of the intro of this video. So if you like what you hear so far and you would like to listen to the full song, I'm gonna leave it in this card right here, but it's also going to be in the description of this video, right? And with that being said, onward. Alright, so this is going to be Time's Car from Chrono Cross Original Soundtrack. Boom! Is that a fretless bass? Yeah, this is a nylon guitar, Spanish guitar. Or classic guitar, classical guitar. <laughs> yeah. So good. Mate, the transitions are insanely good. Whoa! <laughs> that was... Alright. There we have it. That was uh, quite a... Uh, uh, how do you say it? Like uh, a definitive uh, ending right there, a definitive resolution in there. But I'm just going to stop being a blabbermouth right here and uh, save that for the breakdown, alright? So, let's break it down. Alright, so for this particular breakdown, I have been uh, noodling around a little bit with the guitar and first I want to show you, uh, you know, hands-on on the guitar uh, some of the chords that I've been able to figure out that are in the intro and also in the in the second section of the track, let's say where it's, it's a little bit more upbeat, let's say 
and uh, I find I found out really cool, interesting chords and whatnot. So uh, I might as well just r jump right in. So yeah, as you can hear, those are uh, some of the some of the chords. Yes, uh, because there's an other like uh, then then it goes to F, and then G. I think uh, towards the end of, of that first intro of the intro. But uh, you know what? What I find interesting about these chords is that you know this shape right here, uh, like this one, you know, and this one. Are very heavily used in um, uh, progressive rock and progressive metal songs. You know, uh, you will hear this kind of kind of chords in uh, you know 70s progressive rock, and there and then obviously with more uh, saturation and distortion on, on on progressive or or at least the first uh, wave of progressive metal. But I, what I like about this particular, uh, the, the approach that this ha uh, this song has in terms of the chords is that, you know, this, this kind of chords, which I think it's like a suspended chord. Uh, I've talked about suspended chords before, so and they, they are, no pun intended, like suspended in the air. Like they, they don't have really like a resolution or they don't tell you too much about a song in particular uh, to where it's going. So to me, this kind of course serve uh, more as uh, either a, a, as something to bulk up uh, something that's going on on, on on another instrument, apologies, or uh, as a bridge towards something else, like it's trying to tease you towards something else, you don't know where the, the song is really going. But at the same time, obviously, like, that's not the chord that it's played in the intro, it's like, the chord it's like this. Which is like a E minor with ninth something? I don't know, it's <laughs> something like that. Um, uh, and then it does this. Listen to how beautiful that, that chord is, right? I'm gonna play both chords isolated without me talking and then I'm going to explain where, where they go in terms of, of the notes that are there. Alright, so as you can hear there, uh, first let's start with the with the E minor or something, nine, for for namesake. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you can hear that these first three notes don't tell you a, a lot about the song, but when you add this, that note, which makes it like a like an E minor with the odd nine, uh, that note right there. is, uh, you know, the minor thing, and it's adding so much uh, of a darker feeling to it. Everything that is minor is either for the least, at least, melancholic to, to the worst. It could be like super sad or super, uh, you know, uh, something really tragic happened or something, you know? Um, but uh, the, the chord doesn't stop there. Then we have this note right here. And you can hear that as, as, as soon as that note hits, the, the chord changes completely because this is the storytelling of the, tra uh, of the chord, let's say. Uh, let's break it down, like it's, it's first... Oh, something sad or something melancholic is happening, but then... And that note hits, and then it it kind of gives you like uh, wait something something else is going on here. It's not like the end of the world, right? Because this 
It sounds very sad, but then this hit, this note hits, and it gives you a more of a pleasant uh, feeling to it. The, the chord gets more pleasing to the ear, although uh, this is not like this is unpleasant, but it certainly has like a more tension built into it by the nature of the chord. But when this so this this note hits. It, it it's uh, completely different, and that goes along with all the other, um, all the other, right? All the other chords that are involved in the intro. Um, that note right there, you know, this doesn't resolve too much. But when you hit this note, then uh, it's, it tells you more about the story that is behind the track, obviously. Uh, which is, I think this is the the introduction to the game. Like this is the the inter cinematic introduction to the game or something. And then it, that goes towards uh, here and there, like F and G. Although I don't know if I can't remember if they do like the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's basically like the intro. Alright, so now let's talk about the, you know, the, the more rhythmic part of the song or the, the song where it gets upbeat, let's say. Uh, this is definitely like, uh, like more of a flamenco kind of style part of the track. But the interesting thing about this uh, part of the song is that it, a percussion wise, it has more of a Middle Eastern, a Middle East sort of feel. But in the in the rhythm of, of the of the string instruments, uh, uh, I, I'm not really sure if it's still an acoustic guitar here or, or or a more exotic string instrument. But whatever the case may be, it has like this very ubiquitous quintessential you know flamenco rhythm. But uh, in the percussion section, you have more of a Middle Eastern kind of thing. But you would think that those two things are like, you know, exclusive to each other, right? But the thing is that you have to remember that uh, the there's there's uh, a, an acute mid, uh, an acute Middle Eastern influence in flamenco music because as it as it turns out, you know. Uh, the southern part of, of Spain uh, du during the Middle Ages was uh, conquered by the Moors, which were a Middle Eastern empire, so to speak. Uh, well, I don't know if they actually if they actually got to to empire st uh, status, but they they were they occupied the south southern part of what it it is today now the south th southern part of Portugal and Spain. So obviously. Them, them settling in that part of Spain for the longest time, uh, you know, obviously made uh, some of their culture bleed into into what we know uh, the culture of Spain is it is nowadays in terms of music and whatnot. Even uh, it it is so much so that there's uh, a, um, a words in Spanish that are actually they actually come from the moors all right that's so that that much they have the influence on 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 that so it it, it makes sense that when you hear flamenco some of the things that they, that you hear in flamenco are s somewhat similar to what you would hear in the middle east but not on, not not only that uh, you don't have to consider only that but remember that even before that uh you know the Carthaginian empire was also settled in the in the in the in the what do you call it in the southern part of Spain and Portugal. So it goes even beyond you know the Moors. You know even before the Moors, it goes even back to the cart uh, to the 
to the uh, um, age where cartridge was a thing. So it's not surprising that you would hear these two things uh, intertwined uh, together and make sense, even though you would think they are like exclusive or mutually, you know, like they, they don't belong together, so to speak. Because you can hear the track and you can hear that they actually belong together, like they work perfectly well. So for this particular part in the track, I, I'm just going to play the rhythm in the, in the guitar. And I think that the, in this part, the, the, the song is in, in D, like, uh, like I had to, to tune my guitar uh, to drop D to be able to play the, 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 um, the rhythm part. Uh, so, so let's try it out. So yeah, as you can hear there, it's, you know, super flamenco kind of style, but uh, what is interesting here is the what what is uh, intertwined in terms of the other instruments with that rhythm. Uh, like I said before, I'm not really sure if, the, if there's a guitar playing still or if there's another more exotic instrument involved in it. I would, have, I would imagine it's still a guitar, but I, I'm not really sure. Alright, so as you could hear there, I was just doing a, a little bit of an improv over the, you know, basically the two chords that are involved in the in the in the rhythmic section for the most part, I believe, and uh, I just had this idea in my mind that I could take this uh, this chord progression somewhere else that still fits the you know the whole vibe of 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 of, of the of what's happening in the song right right there but uh, I think I'm actually going to use that for a, for, a, for a song of my own or something you know that variation that I did because uh, I want to make sure to, uh, I want to make clear that that is not in the song that's not in the composition uh, on the arrangements of the song but it's something that I came up just you know improvising and noodling around with it a little bit but you think it sounds pretty cool I think it sounds pretty cool <laughs> So yeah, to finalize my commentary, I would like to say that, I mean, the song is really beautiful, all over, all, I mean, like, the, the the instruments that are involved in it, like, you know, starting with the acoustic guitar, with the fretless bass, that's something that you don't hear often at all, using a fretless bass, but again, that's something that you would hear in progressive rock or progressive metal, so... Something tells me that the composer of, of this track uh, actually like a lot uh, progressive rock or progressive metal or both, either either one of those. Um, and then transitioning that intro, uh, you know, that very tamed, very bittersweet sort of sort of intro because of the reasons I already explained towards the the chords and whatnot that are involved and the notes of it. Uh, towards the more rhythmic, upbeat part, which is this flamenco-style kind of thing with the underlying Middle Eastern percussion that is going on. I mean, it works so well. And also, obviously, in terms of, of the storytelling, I suppose, you could say that since this is the intro of, of, of the game, like, you start the game and this is the intro song of the game, you know, it starts... Um, 
in this bittersweet note, but then it goes upbeat, to, uh, and that that kind of six signals, you know, like the flamenco part, it's kind of signals the, um, you know, the adventure that is about to come, the adventure that you're about to to embark. Let's say, you know, so it starts uh, to kind of give you this. Uh, like it's trying to psych you into, you know, into, you know, we are we are about to go into this adventure, in, in, into this, into, into this fantastic journey. So, it's very fitting that that the song would uh, actually go towards a more uh, of an apex part, right? Like a, like more of a climatic part, and then <laughs> the song like has this insanely res abrupt resolution, you know, which is, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it's. Uh, you have you have the rhythmic part and then the, boom that's it <laughs> and that's the the end of a song uh very interesting you know because you would think that uh the, the song would have more of a uh i don't want to say unresolved but a more uh, uh soft let's say let's say soft resolution because the the story continues right so it you would think that you it was it was going to try to ease you and fade in into the story itself but maybe in terms of the uh, of the game design and whatnot it has to end like that because maybe there's another cinematic coming in or there's another song uh, uh that is very different uh, uh from that one you know it, there has to be a reason why uh, it ends so abruptly so i think i'm gonna give this track a golden batch i really enjoyed it Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friend. Also, please don't forget to visit my Patreon, my coffee profile and my coffee store in case you want to uh, support my work further and my Teespring merch shop. And of course, ex nihilo, mihil fit.